everyone, it's me. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so today's personal vlog. I'm actually getting a little better day by day and it's just shy past two months since mom passed away. And um, I haven't been blogging as much this month. I think the last blog was like the 5th of March or 2nd of March and then I blogged yesterday about how I've been feeling and how everything is going with regards to my grief and trying to adjust to mom not being here. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. Um, you know, grief, like I've said before, it's different for everybody. Everyone experiences grief in their own way, depending on the type of loss, um, you know, who it is that you've lost, what situation it is. And it doesn't even have to be from someone passing away. Grief comes from divorce, loss of friendship, loss of job, loss of a pet or another loved one. But it doesn't have to be death. But in any, in, in any form, loss is a tragedy. And you also have to change uh, your thought process and your daily routines, which your brain has been used to. So I'm noticing that um, I am adjusting to mom's absence. Uh, it's not as difficult anymore to wake up and leave my room and pass by her den and see her urn. Uh, it was a little challenging in the beginning, but, um, sorry, I'm looking for my lip gloss on found it. The one thing I noticed on a tangent is that um, because I'm crying and I haven't been crying too much but because I'm crying all the time, my lips are like really chapped because I'm getting dehydrated. So I've been trying to do some extra hydration. And if you found this because you're looking for ways to cope with grief or loss or looking for just any random online personal journal, just a little fact for you. You have to drink extra water when you're grieving because you cry so much of it out that your body actually dehydrates. Um, <laughs> it's been two months and I still haven't really learned to drink too much. I, I'm trying, but sometimes I forget. And so these side effects happen. Anyways, um, so like I was saying, you know, it's the adjustments actually happening and it's happening naturally. And it's kind of shocking to me because... I didn't expect it to be this smooth, if that makes sense. Um, and what I mean by that is it's a natural change. Like, you know how when you quit a job and start a new one, you know the change is there. But with a mom's loss, even though I know she's gone, the adjustment of her being gone is going smoother than I thought. Um, I thought I would fight it more, honestly. But we're all naturally wired to adjust to changes like that, I guess. Um, it's not as difficult only because maybe it's because mom got cremated and she's here at home with us, you know, technically speaking. Or maybe my brain's just finally getting those synapses rewired. Um... I don't know, but either way, it's very strange to know that I'm adjusting naturally to her absence. And it, it's sad in a way, too, because it's something I never wanted to do, uh, never expected to do this soon. Um, but so that's happening. And I'm still working from home. You know, COVID's still real. And here where I live, it's not open to everyone just yet or my age group and around a frontline worker uh, you know I don't work in any, any industry that requires me to do anything with uh, other people I'm not in any of those categories so I have to wait it out but dad did get his vaccine he got the Pfizer and he finished his his shots he got a second one uh, Monday so he's gonna be good to go in two weeks and I'm hoping that Frank and I will be able to also because I'll feel more comfortable going out and eating at a restaurant if I'm 
vaccinated, whether or not it's completely effective or just a little bit, it's almost like a shield for me, you know, so I'm looking forward to that because it'll make me feel more comfortable. That's all it is, really. I just want to be more comfortable to start going out because we actually haven't gone anywhere um, since March 8th of last year, so it has been a year. And it's just so weird, you know, this whole pandemic took a lot of last year away for mom. And I catch myself sometimes wondering, should we have taken the chance and taken her out at least for a drive, you know, but to risk her life that way, she may have gone sooner than she did. Um, so I can't regret that. But anyways, uh, yeah, so... It's strange to know that just last year, I had her here. You know, she was here outside in her den a year ago today. To remind myself of that <laughs> hurts sometimes, but my brain can't help but think that. Especially because Facebook memories, uh, Google photos will show me a year ago today, two years ago today, you know, etc. And... It'll be photos of mom, you know, random ones, uh, celebrations like Easter, holiday photos, you know, and uh, it's hard to see them in a way. I mean, they make me smile seeing photographs of her and remembering what we did a year ago today. At the same time, it hurts because it's also a reminder that she isn't here anymore. I'm not going to get those opportunities to have photos with her, selfies, or just take photos of her in general. <laughs> I wish I had recorded her more than I did. Um, but, I mean, you know, I have what I have to keep with me. And I'm glad I caught her laugh and her smile and her voice in some way. So, you know, memories, reminders, of like through videos and photographs, it's hard. But I'm glad they're there at the same time. But, yeah, past the 60-day mark, so far, I can't complain. I've had bouts of grief, obviously. There are moments even on television that make me cry, like watching American Idol. I think I mentioned this before, but watching American Idol and seeing the mother and daughter taking a selfie together made me lose it. <laughs> uh, so little things like that will still hit me hard. Uh, even something as small as going on Instacart and uh, going through the produce aisle or the vegetable or fruit aisles online and saying, oh man, they have blueberries. Mom would have wanted that today. Or seeing a dozen roses. Oh, man. I wish I could order her some. You know, she'd love that. It's strange, you know. Like, I, I think I've said this, but I'm going to say it again. Even past the 60-day mark, we're still fresh into losing mom. You know, this isn't a year or five years later. I've come to accept that the grief is going to be with me always. And that I've changed a little bit. Um, if I wasn't withdrawn before, I'm withdrawn now. Um, I have noticed that I don't want to talk to people directly. <laughs> I'd rather do vlogs and write my blogs instead to share. And it has nothing to do with everyone else. And I hope they understand that. It has everything to do with me just not wanting to really communicate. Um, I'm just not in the mood. It's, it feels kind of exhausting, um, to try and talk to people. Even chatting, uh, can be a challenge, you know, to try and keep up friendships. A and the, the friendship thing is really not that hard. They've all been so good, um, at understanding why I'm not speaking, not texting, not chatting. I just don't feel like it. It, For some reason, it's tiring. Um, but then again, to this thought that, oh man, I wish I could do this with mom. And I don't want to do that to people. I don't want to have that thought like, oh, I wish she was mom. I wish I could chat with her. I wish I could WhatsApp her. I wish I could video chat her and check on her. You know, to do that to other people is just, I shouldn't. It's It has nothing to do with them. And so I've, I've withdrawn a little bit. I, I still try and chat every day um, if I can. 
Uh, and if I can't, I, you know, luckily all my friends understand, which is good. But I found that vlogging and writing my, my blog is the best form of social, uh, of socializing that I can have right now. I think it's because if one friend finds this, then the other 10 might, and I don't have to repeat myself constantly. I don't have to constantly hear, how are you doing? Are you okay? It'll get better. And no offense to them, because that's all people can do, especially because there really isn't anything you can do for anyone who loses someone. All you can do is be there and be supportive. And the only way that we know how to socially check on people is to say, hey, how are you? You doing okay? You doing better? Don't worry, it'll get better. You know, I've done it hundreds of times. And um, now I understand why people who have lost somebody are like, screw you. <laughs> you know, And not to be rude to me when I do that to them. But now I understand that when you hear those things, it's like, really? I'm not okay. But I know that's not what they want to hear. So you're like, oh, I'm all right. You know, and to lie to people that way, to pacify their query that way is just, eh, I don't want to do that to anyone. That just seems rude. Um, but anyways, that's why I do the blogs and, and the blogs and also hoping that some random person comes across this when they're looking in desperation for an answer, someone who relates, hopefully I can relate to, to them, you know, hopefully if they're co coming in, you know, fresh from loss of any kind and they're wondering, am I thinking the right way? Well, I'm here to tell you there's no right way, people. There's, there's your way. And as long as you don't want to kill yourself or harm others through your grief, you can get through this, you know. And don't be afraid to ask for help because I've learned that asking for help is good and sometimes necessary. And read. Try to find blogs or books you know, and, and read about this because educating yourself for any reason is a good thing. Uh, even when it comes to educating yourself about grief and loss. But the one tidbit that you'll probably come across in a couple books and especially here in my blog or my journal, my blog, is that there's no wrong way to grieve and that you grieve your own way. Grief is like a snow is like a snowflake. It's unique to its owner it's even though we have us we're in the similar boat we still can't understand each other's grief because it's it's completely unique to the individual there's no other way to put it so don't expect to have the exact same experience and don't take advice too much from people only because their advice is including mine the advice comes from the experience that that one person had and if the advice is specific to what they've gone through, it may not work for you. On the other end of that, you should also listen to stories because it's a great guide to try and find your path through your loss and your grief journey. So that's what I hope for is to help someone find their path, you know, hopefully give them a sense or an idea of how to get through things. And that <laughs> is the best update I can give right now. You know, you notice I smile. I don't know if you guys have watched View from the Top. It's one of the, well, it's not the dumbest movie. It's fun. But there's a part in there where they say, do you know what's, what um, stewardesses' is bad habit is? Is that even through all the crap, uh, we've been trained to smile. And honestly, through my life, I've been trained to always be happy and I always try to be and smiling's okay um but as as happy as I might look or as as much as I might smile I am hurting inside and that's okay you know and it's okay for you too if you're hurting don't worry about anybody else self-care and self-love is very important right now and I've learned that too in the past 60 odd days is that I need to take care of me and it's okay to say no, which I barely ever said in my lifetime. <laughs> it's okay to say no to events, 
see things, to hanging out, to phone calls, to even chatting. It's okay to say no, not respond, uh, any of that, you know, you, you got to take care of yourself. And so I'm, I'm learning to do that slowly, but surely. And, um, yeah, it still feels weird, of course, without mom. And despite her absence, I, I am learning to cook for one less person to grocery shop for one less person. It's a huge adjustment to me, um, but I'm getting there. And it, it's just going to take a lot of time. So thanks. If you've made it through this 15 and a half minutes of just babbling, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. And uh, check out my blog. The link is on my YouTube channel page. And thanks again for being here for me. And I hope I was there for you somehow today. So we'll talk again soon. In the meantime, if you have your mom around, please hug her for me because I wish I could hug my mom. And if she's not present with you, but you can chat her or text her, shoot her a text, you know, chat her and say you love her because you never know when those little things will mean the most. And trust me, they will. Bye now. <laughs>